I don't have any big revelations or answers in any music. And I don't want to pretend like I know what I'm talking about because I, I don't. <laughs> I don't even consider myself particularly a good writer or anything. I'm just kind of a fan of music. Course and fable and faked by still lightning. I have to get to the root of these things in order to move forward because I was just living in death and now I kind of want to live in some sort of answer and some sort of solution. But you hung on had cable. The British, they take all their prog rock from like tales of old and sing about like finding a magic mushroom in a faraway galaxy. It's very mystical and fairy tale-ish. There's no songs about like cocaine and cars. That's what Americans would write about in prog rock, you know? Hey. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yes, I'm doing fine. Maybe I uh, turn the camera. Is that better? Yeah, that's much better. You're in my my shitty kitchen. Your shitty kitchen. Your shit kitchen. My shit kitchen. You're living in Chicago, right? No, I moved to New York City, and now I live in uh, Massachusetts, in New England. Some time ago we met. I remember. It's good to see you again. Likewise. So many questions. I have many answers. Okay, cool, cool. And thank you very much for the new album, Course in Fable. I love it. I really love it. Thank you, Bill. I remember being final and free. But the corner, the bookies were stuck laughing. Never abroad, and I'm chewing on a Lucy. Dragon brain drain, make you chew. Folks dodging, singing karaoke of credit. Uh, you dedicate the album in memory of Alejandro Morales. What happened exactly with the guy? He was one of my best friends. Um, I lived with him for years in Chicago. He was a great musician. He played a bunch of like noise bands and punk bands. Um, but he died pretty unexpectedly, um, just underlying health issues. And it was real sad. Um, that was like, you know, it's it's a weird part of life. I'm, it's starting to happen. You know, I'm 31 now, and as the years go by, you know, friends die, people get divorced. You know, so it's always it's this first wave of death in my life that it, it sucks. And I'm sure as I get older, it'll happen more. It's it's terrible. But yeah, he was a very dear friend who passed away, um, and uh, I loved him very much. He was a it was a tragedy, and it's a. I'll, I'll never get over it, you know, but, so I dedicated the record to him. Each Wednesday, load my boot up with a beast. State flag and newsprint, optics take the lead. Snapshot of long form, winded by the breeze. Fake gas pump for photo opportunities. My favorite song at this moment is Shiva with Dust Pan. And, um, I dove into the world of Hindu and I found the uh, special character of Shiva. How did the idea of Shiva with dustpan came up? Um, I wish there was a better story, but I just came up with that lyric on the spot. Um, I don't have a lot of knowledge or connection to Hinduism or anything like that. Um, I'm not particularly religious or anything, but I liked how it sounded and how it looked on paper, Shiva with dustpan. You know, it's like Shiva cleaning up your shit or whatever. Yeah. And uh, the way I write lyrics, I, I'm not a very good storyteller on paper or in songs at least. I always write like couplets, like in a journal and kind of stitch them together. It's all sort of non sequitur, stream of consciousness, crazy talk. I don't have any big revelations or answers in any music. And I don't want to pretend like I know what I'm talking about because I, I don't. <laughs> I don't even consider myself particularly a good writer or anything. I'm, I'm just kind of a fan of music. I assume you love instrumental music. Very true, yeah, of course. That's how I started. I Before I ever sang songs, I was doing instrumental stuff. That was kind of my forte into playing live. Has it always been guitar? Yeah, I can't play anything else, really. I don't have any technique, at least. I can fake it on like piano and bass, but I'm not very good. I, I can play guitar, that's all. I pretty much learned everything on my own and um, listening to records and through friends and stuff like that. I think over the last 
three or four years, I've listened to pretty much just prog rock, mostly British and European prog rock. Americans, we're okay at it. We have a few good prog rock bands, but you know, the Italians and the Brits and um, the Germans, they, they, they did prog rock very well. The British, they take all their prog rock from like tales of old and sing about like finding a magic mushroom in a faraway galaxy. It's very mystical and um, fairy tale-ish. It's, it's prog with a capital P, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There, there's no songs about like cocaine and cars. That's what Americans would write about in prog rock, you know? How would you describe the whole album yourself? Uh, well, there's a lot more joy in it, I think. It's not as much of a, I don't, I don't hear any death in it. I hear a lot of like a life and joy in it. That comes from my own reality. I think uh, I'm a little happier and life's a little more manageable at this point. And that kind of comes through in the music. Um, so overall theme is just uh, redemption and joy, gratitude. You were talking about being happy at this very moment, more happy than the past few years. What happened that made you less happy? Uh, just self-sabotage and, um, you know, my brain is full of uh, weird neurodivergencies that send me into spirals. And I think I've just learned to manage that better with medication and a lot of therapy and um, a lot of abstinence from any and all mind altering substances. Um, I, I identify as a drug addict, but I don't use drugs anymore. Think, think whatever. Thank God, he, she, they, it, whatever. Um, I, I have a program and a set of tools to keep me more balanced. Um, yeah, uh, li life just gets difficult when you don't treat yourself right, yeah. and and other you know, and other people for that matter. You know, um relationships with people, family and friends were all secondary to drugs and that's a major problem. So um, I have to get to the root of these things in order to move forward because I was just living in death and now I kind of want to live in some sort of answer and some sort of solution. I have a long way to go. Um, this is a lifelong thing. I'm still a very imperfect person, but I'm very much happier. Course and fable and faked by still lightning in search of able cut my hand trying to reach into no talk of the cross that you hung on had cable midweek adverts for joint pain remind yourself and this new state of mind or state of being, does it make you more or less creative? They often tend to say that state of unhappiness creates better songs. Yeah, and I would have liked to have believed that for a long time, and I did believe that. <clears throat> this sort of uh, martyrdom complex of I have to suffer, people need to see me suffer, but that's just pure ego um, and definitely was a part of me. But at this point, creativity comes second to my well-being, you know, before I put creativity in front of everything and that just makes you go crazy, you know, you've got to put your health first. Yeah. So at this point, I feel like my work is, I don't know, that, that's, I feel like it's better if somebody else feels like it's worse or shittier, that's fine. But I feel like uh, it's much better and um, more authentic, more, more real, you know, there's a lot of uh, covering up a lot of emotional pain before. So now it's, it's more real and honest and I'm, I'm happy about that. We have this beautiful picture over here from you sitting in the studio in Amsterdam North, 
being very happy behind a microphone. Was that just a picture or were you happy at that very moment? Yeah, I think I was happy in that moment. Um, usually when I, when I go to a studio, I'm so happy. It's, a, it's like a playground of cool instruments and microphones and toys. It's a great place to be. Um, yeah, I was definitely happy then. I, I, I love and appreciate going to Amsterdam and getting to work there in whatever capacity. And of course, you're a wonderful host. <laughs> I didn't expect that one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank yes. you. I do my best. Yes. So, yeah, because I keep that picture because it's 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 and that's probably too much for you to hear. It's such a unity, you and the RCA microphone. It's a beautiful picture. Yeah, it's a wonderful photo. I, I remember that. And I remember playing and it sounded magical. Funny thing she said to me. I could see you giving me a child. Oh, but you're rubbing eye. You're gonna give them what is mine. Thank you very much for now, Riley. My pleasure. Thank you, Phil. And uh, yeah, thank you all for the beautiful album. I love it. Pleasure. Yeah, See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.